fitness.com states that on average, Americans sit for 11 hours a day. Now, although I find this, this statistic to be pretty depressing, I don't find it to be surprising at all. I mean, think about it, you guys. We sit in class, as you're all doing right now. We sit and we study, which we as Cal Poly students study a lot. We sit oftentimes when we commute. We sit at work. We sit a lot. And a very obvious hazard of sitting a lot is gaining weight. But what about the not so obvious risks? The scary truth is that extremely dangerous health risks can arise from living a sedentary lifestyle. And I believe that it's important for all of you to know not only what these risks are, but what you can each do to prevent them from happening to you. Weightlossforall.com reveals some of the life-threatening health risks that can ar arise from living a sedentary lifestyle, such as cancer and heart disease. Now you may think, how can I get cancer and heart disease from simply sitting too much? But let me explain to you. When we don't exercise, our bodies cannot expel the cancer-causing radicals, so down the line this can lead to breasts, lung, and other types of cancer, which obviously is very serious. And when we sit for too long, cholesterol is way more likely to build up in our arteries, which down the line can lead to heart disease, diabetes, heart attacks, really, really serious things. And I do like, I would like you to look at this infographic for a moment. As you can see here, 300,000 deaths occur annually due to inactivity and poor dietary habits in the United States alone. And 20% of all deaths for people 35 years and older is due to a lack of physical activity. In my view, this is absolutely terrifying. I mean, this is death we're talking about. Um, this isn't just, oh, I sit a lot, oh well, I might gain a little bit of weight. No, like, people are actually dying because of this. So, a lack of, for a lack of physical activity, you could honestly put your life at stake down the line, which is extremely serious. Um, and a lack of exercise is not only detrimental to one's physical health, but it can deeply hinder mental health as well. Last year, a meta-analysis survey was conducted by psychiatrist Felipe Such to analyze if there was a correlation between having a major depressive disorder and not getting an enough physical activity. And unfortunately, the results were not very surprising. The proportion of people with a major depressive disorder not meeting the recommended physical activity guidelines was 68%. This, labor, this later enabled him to conclude that adults with major depressive disorders engage in, in low levels of physical activity and high levels of sedentary behavior. So, you know, if you don't exercise enough, you're way more likely to have depression, which is very unfortunate. But adding on to this on a more, uh, in a more positive light, SymptomVine.com states that physically active people release chemicals in their brain when they exercise to help them improve stress and uh, mood. So AKA, when you exercise more, you're able to be just less stressed out and more calm and more happy, which I'm sure every single person in this room strives to do, and it's really not hard to achieve. So what kind of person would I be if I told you all these really terrifying things that can happen to you, and I didn't tell you how to change your habits? So may I ask all of you to please stand up. I'm sorry, I know it's kind of early. And if you will, please maybe walk around the room a little bit, up and down the aisles, just a little bit. Do a little bit of stretching. And yeah, you're free to sit down whenever you want. So what you just did right there, although it may seem very simple, according to NPR, greatly, greatly helped your blood sugar and your cholesterol because you just kept your body moving. The great thing about all this is that you really don't have to become some super crazy exercise-aholic, I'm going to run marathons and hit the gym five times a day in order to stay healthy. No. According to womenshealth.com, the key is to just keep your body moving. So that's why things like taking quick walks, taking the stairs, stretching, yoga, gardening, cooking, although that's a little bit ironic given this topic. All these things just keep your body moving and it will greatly, greatly help your metabolism and your blood flow. You know, these are all super easy to do. I'm sure all of you do these things on a daily basis anyways, but to just make an effort to, you know, go that extra step will greatly, greatly help you in the long run and in the present, in the present life. There is no doubt that the hazards of living a sedentary lifestyle are scary, but my point of this speech is to not frighten you, but to really just encourage you um, to do something each day that requires just a little bit of physical activity. 
This will greatly help you not only in your present life to live a much more happy, calm, and healthy lifestyle, but it will greatly help you in the future as well to prevent you from having any hazardous um, things happen to you mentally and physically.